But some of you might have noticed I'm quite partial to a bit of Merlot. And uh, this is quite a good one. Home bargains in cross hands. Hang on. Oh, it's yibo. Oh, God, crust. Get out. Get out, crust. Hardy's. Hardy's Merlot. What, what year is it? 2022. And it's from... From, oh God, where's it from? Southeastern Australia. I don't know if you can see it. Oh. What is it? Uh, oh, no, perhaps it'll come out clearer later. Southwestern Australia. Perth, Perth, Western Australia. Wine of Australia, Southeastern Australia, la la la, imported into Surrey Weybridge. <laughs> in bottles or in bloody whatevers. And it's got a whole list of something or other. Oh no, that's all different languages. Uh, very idle. Very idle range. What the hell does that mean? What strength is it? Ten percent. Not too bad. Ten percent. Merlot. Fruit juice. Twenty twenty-two. So it's four a year old. Twenty twenty-two vintage. Well, in Australia terms, that's winter. Yeah, well, which winter though? Is it 2022, 2023? Or is it 2021 to 2022? Because, you know, their winters are uh, six months the other way around to us. VR. What does VR mean? Victoria Rain. Anyway. Oh, what's this? Established eighteen fifty three. Yeah. The days of transportation. Make a loaf of bread, you're off to Australia to be a slave, picking grapes. Established eighteen fifty three, my ass. Right then let's test let's end let's stop talking randomly. Oh I wanna just give it a Give it a bit of air in. Whatever oxygen is above the... What's it? And crack it. It's got a cracker. Oh, hear that? <laughs> Smell the cork. <laughs> Smells like Christmas. Yeah, it does, you know. You know that Christmas smell. Yeah, but that, that's back in the days where, that's back in the days where everyone was smoking. It's always a Christmas, oh, the scar, cigars are out and all that. That's a real Christmas now. I bet you the Viner or whatever you call it, the blend, no, it's not blend, it's a load of grapes. The Viner must have smoked. <laughs> I did smell cigars. Yeah, but they just dump the bloody liquid up the top and then wee 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 bottles I know how it works automatically filling not a human in sight robots AI, AI ro bottling robots whiz 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 <laughs> whiz Charlie is my, Charlie is my darling, my darling, my darling. Michael go, where are you? Oh, he's gone to the toilet. No bloody surprise. 
He got to the bathroom to have a bath. I put talcum powder up his nose. Mm. I digress. Tories like the cocaine. Cocaine. Oh, no, no. Coffee. Coffee. The Tory housewives. Cocaine. They have a couple of mugs of bloody Nescafe coffee. And then up, and then they're bloody hoover in the house. God, again. They need coffee to hoover their houses because it's so bloody huge. And they can't afford the cleaners anymore. Well, all the cleaners have gone back to bloody Eastern Europe after Brexit. Oh, God. I'm, I'm, talk about talking around it. Anyway. Go, Syrah Queen, my son. Right, there we go. I'm going for it. Yep. Yep. I bought it. I've had a few of these. And it's good. But once it gets into the stomach, it does sort of uh, stir the acid in your stomach. I was talking about acid uh, earlier on with Marcus. All shots. He's, he's saying uh, his wife's acid levels in the stomach are not low enough. They're about five point something when they should be one. Hydrochloric acid in the stomach. You know, your stomach makes acid that could dissolve steel. You know, it's remarkable to think, you know. Uh, in uh, mammals like us, it's designed to, it's designed to dissolve bones. Oh Jesus Christ! And you, know, you know, you know the feeling when you uh, suddenly belch and it's bloody an acidic belch. Oh, the pain up your, pain up your food tube, your esophagus, and then if it gets as far as your mouth, oh my God! You're cringing like fuck, man. Excuse my French. You're cringing like bollocks. But I don't know. Varietal range. I think that's a... That means it doesn't come from France. It comes from bloody Western Australia. Outside Perth. Jesus Christ, it's hot there, Perth. I thought Brisbane in Queensland was bad enough. And when was it? January, February? No, no, no. Oh, Christ, what am I talking about? I thought Brisbane was bad enough. July, July, that's it, 2001, when I went to see the British Lions play in Brisbane. Well, I, not exactly. I did, well, I did ask around for a ticket on the old uh, black market. I, I only landed from Singapore four hours earlier, so I didn't have much time to fucking... <laughs> and, uh, and it was... Bloody uh, red eye flight from uh, Singapore via Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So went up to hop flight up to Kuala Lumpur from Singapore, Malaysian Airlines, and then transferred onto Kuala Lumpur to. Uh, oh, I'm talking, I'm talking, I, I, I'm telling you, it was cheap, man. It was cheap. I couldn't believe how cheap it was. The flight was overnight eight hours on its own to Brisbane. It only cost me about under forty pounds. And I thought, you what? No, no, I was less than that. No, no, that was hundred and forty Singaporean dollars. It was sixty quid in English money, something like that. I couldn't believe it. God blame me. And we won. We won. I watched it in an Irish pub in Brisbane Town Centre. Murphy's, I think it's called. Murphy's. Maybe it's called... <laughs> called something else, then. Yeah, I was there for... What was it? Five or six days. Uh, I installed the machine in Singapore. And uh, told the engineer, this, that, and the other. This is how it works. I'll be back in a week. <laughs> 
I'll be back in a week. So yeah, plenty of time to f for you to fiddle about with it, and you to instruct your uh, staff how to use it. And any problems? I'll be back in a week. Came back a week later. No problems. No problems. They were in full production. We bang, we bang, we bang. It's to make, uh, you know, this was uh, in the days of when broadband was uh, exploding. Microelectronic and um, um, fiber optic phone lines were exploding, and uh, uh, we didn't use, we didn't make the device, but we we supplied the machines that packaged it, which was just the base. And they put the lid on top, and we made the machine that, uh, oh yes, the machine oven to evacuate all the water molecules, vacuum oven, in high temperature. And then it gets chucked into a cabinet, nitrogen cabinet, and then the uh, sealer, bang, yeah, yeah. All very technical stuff, see. All very technical. Yeah. Then my body gave up. Due to two reasons. <laughs> Not to do this, honest. Honest. It doesn't help, I admit, but I've got to the bottom of. Uh, me years to find out exactly what the problem was. Autoimmune system problems in the guts reacting to wheat, 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 and oh, the ant, wheat, no. Well, barley is not so bad, but it does sort of, but things like bread, pastries, cakes, biscuits, total poison to me, and I never knew. You know, I never knew. I should write a book on it. But you think, you know, you know, it's not um, snake oil talk here. It's the truth. It's the truth. It's affecting my autoimmune system. And it's all due to mainly wheat. Because... Looking back, <laughs> it, was, it was straight in front of my face, man. You know, uh, like, for instance, this company that w where I ended up in Singapore, every morning, S sandwich lady in a van is come around. But she buy two packs of sandwiches, and that's what kept me going from 7 o'clock in the morning till 5 o'clock in the evening. Maybe longer. Oh, yeah, well, at the, most of the time, well... At the start, I was working from 7 in the morning to 7 in the evening. 12 hour days. 7, seven days a week. But I had to cut that one. But, yeah, and and I knew, oh, my God, it was really affecting me, these bloody sandwiches. And it's happening in other places. You know, no British companies now have got their own uh, canteen. So all this crap we got to live on. Engineering, engineering world. You gotta live on crap, pasties, sandwiches, and shit, wheat shit. That's why I became, why I became ill, and it took me years to find out why. It's because uh, my body reacts to wheat. Uh, I went to the GP so many times and you can see the look in their eyes. They may have an idea what's wrong with you, but they don't tell you. I, I give up in the end. It, it, there's more stress having, um, more stress going to the GPs, the doctors, than I actually have in the condition. And there was other things in life going on with me. I just bloody gave up. I'm drunk. True. There's something going on. But 
is the sweet it is, and not so much the, well, hardly anything to do with the alcohol. I'm basically a very fit and strong person. Good constitution. God born, born. God given, born. Constitution. That's why you will. Uh, that's why you pissed the armed forces. You know. You know. Go that way 50 miles. Okay. See you tonight. <laughs> I'll see you there tonight. Yeah. Then. Uh, I, when I first joined the RAF. I noticed. Well. There wasn't much bread about and things like that. You know, potatoes and other vegetables and stews. After six weeks in basic boot camp, I felt so on top of the world, it was amazing. And that because uh, there wasn't much wheat things like bread. Well, it wasn't hardly any at all. I thought, Bloody yeah, it's remarkable of that. And you think, maybe, maybe the RAF dietitians did that, did that on purpose. Because the, the RAF dietitians may realise that wheat is a major human body neurotoxin. Well, not a major one, but it affects some people. Some people can eat it and it doesn't affect them at all. People like me. It does. It does. Yeah. It all makes so, so much sense when you do look back, doesn't it, at times. You know, my father, he, he lost his legs and I didn't know why. And I inherited from, that, from him. Uh, ataxia, you know. Ataxia is uh, when you lose your balance and your Handwriting goes to buggery. You, you're walking unsteady and your balance is going. That's a taxi. That's what my father had. And I didn't know why. It must have been uh, a wheat allergy as well. And that's the same thing with my great, um, my grandfather, his father, Edwin. Yeah, because he was always complaining. Well, he didn't complain. I think it is when he, when he was, well, when he started to really complain when he was about seventy, and you know, and he used to tell me, I used to have these passing out events and things like that. Uh, he lasted until his mid eighties, and he, he was found dead on his bed. Dead on his bed. Uh, with his trousers half down or something. Young. Yeah. Ah, heart gave in. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, people just want to be the same as everyone else, don't they? So they just carry on doing eating, whatever, drinking, whatever, just do, you know, I'm part of you type of thing. And then you, some at some point, you realise something isn't right here, as I found. But my brain is, you know, I used to be very sparky when I was young. And it's slowly coming back. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. It's only because of the microelectronic communication age that allows me to research it. You know, I've reading papers. Oh God, you know, been up so many dead ends, and I finally, finally found it. Have a good week off.